Hello and welcome to Viewpoints Dominion DMS's video podcast series where we highlight our vendor partners. I'm Sharon Kitzman, I'm president of Dominion DMS and today I'm speaking to Eric Schlesinger. He's the chief revenue officer for Active Engage. Eric, it's been a month, um, almost to the day, since the last time we chatted about the industry and your solutions, our solutions, excited. Uh, et cetera. I'm excited to hear what is happening at Active Engage post NADA. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think as I explained to you, I mean, NADA this year for us, it was the first time in the 17 year history of the company that we ever took the step and exhibited. Mm. So, you know, I've exhibited in the past with previous companies and stuff like that. So my expectations were. Uh, they were set pretty low from the standpoint yeah. of, of expectations and what we're going to get. It it ended up being you know a great show for us. Whether it was from uh, the booth presence and people coming and seeing us, or the visibility that we had walking around and and being able to have conversations, as an example, with you at your booth and and so forth. And and I think that this NADA. Had, had a little bit of a different tone than a lot of them in the past. Dealers were much more engaging. They were much more eager to find out information to learn about you and your company versus in, you know, in the past where you quite often found them, you know, walking around head down, badge turned around so you didn't see the color of it or anything else. But right. it's it, it was it was great and it was great to see everybody you know, the last few years have obviously been interesting when it comes to large, you know, gatherings like NIDA and stuff like that, but we're back and yeah. it felt really good. That's a great way to put it. I, I definitely felt like this was my 33rd NADA. It definitely felt like a pre-pandemic NADA energy and to your point, yeah. in, engagement from dealers. So, well, that's fantastic. Um, you know, Friday and Saturday were just crushed, um, but... Mm -hmm. Sunday, everybody has a little bit more time on their hands. And as I kind of walked down the, the main street or the main drag there um, in the hall, uh, I, I can't even count. Um, I don't have enough fingers, I guess I should say, <laughs> to count the number of times that I saw the term AI, right? It felt like everybody was <laughs> pitching artificial intelligence, whether it existed or not, um, at least they were wanting to talk about it because it seemed like it was uh, it was the buzzword. Um, it if, is... you, if you think about. Go, Go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that's OK. I was just going to say, if you if you think about how much AI can really do to help dealers, is there a place for it or is it just the latest buzzword? No, there is a place for it. And you're right. I mean, it, you know, it has been, it has been one of those buzzwords in the past and stuff like that. But with the introduction of chat GPT, you know, in December of 2022, uh, and then companies starting to go and to use it and to find places for it there there are absolutely places for any business uh, to be able to go about utilizing some of these tools. And I'm going to preface that no matter how you use it, you do still need to uh, back up whatever it is that you're getting out of it uh, with your own research, your own conclusions and so forth, uh, is it's not perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. The It absolutely has a place in things like business processes, looking for ways to write things like policies or to understand uh, certain nuances. Remember that, you know, that these systems were built in many ways to be able to act as super search engines more than anything else and to be able to present answers, you know, to what it is that you're asking questions about. And they're also limited on the data set. So if you use ChatGPT as an example, depending on which version, if you're using 3.5 or 4.0, the data set that's inside of it only goes to a specific date. It's not mm -hmm. connected to the internet where it's able to pull in uh, you know, current information, current data, it's always been curated. That being said, we're, I believe that AI does not currently have a place, especially in the automotive industry, is on the consumer facing side of things in real time conversations. You don't want 
uh, AI necessarily being the one that's answering the phone uh, and, and, you know, explaining that it's, you know, your personal assistant. I mean, I had one dealer tell me how he's got this and how many times he's listened to the phone calls of people on this and they just sit there and go, hell no, and hang up the phone because they want <laughs> nothing to do with talking to, a, you know, a computer. Or the same thing comes when it comes to, you know, messaging, live chat and stuff like that. I think we've all heard the story so far about the the customer who was able to get the Chevy dealer, uh, like in Wisconsin, the and Tahoe, using the AI. I think, yeah. <laughs> there was there were two things. You know, one he got he was able to buy a Tahoe for a dollar. Uh, I That's drive right. a Tahoe, so I know how expensive they are. Uh, as well as you know, was able to get it to write code in Python. You know, on the mm -hmm. dealer's website. So there's, you know, that might not necessarily be the place. I mean, let's face it, buying a car is a pretty emotional and uh, complicated thing. Uh, I don't think we're there where computers telling us how to do that yet. Yeah. No, I, and I, I heard you say something similar on a, a podcast recently uh, with Jake Davis at, I think it's Volley Rally. Yes. Um, yep. and, and you said, you know, at the end of the day, uh, people buy and service cars from people, not, That's not exactly robots. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and while there, there might be efficiency gains inside the operation when it, when it comes to the consumer experience, dealers need to be really, really careful to squelch the AI hype a little bit and not look to, I guess, save a buck in lieu of upsetting a, a, a prospect. So yeah, absolutely. I guess um, well-trained team members inside the dealership is, is still kind of number one priority. It absolutely is. I mean, and we're hearing it as I'm sure you are right now. It's, it's, you know, now that we are, I can say, I guess, officially post pandemic and back to quote unquote <laughs> normality uh dealers are having to teach you know the the salespeople that they've hired over the last few years in the stores of how to sell uh you know because they they all got to this place where for a few years they were you know order takers they were you know as apple calls it like the apple geniuses where they were just educating the customer on the product and mm -hmm. the options that are available and helping them go through the ordering process that's not any anymore. We need those people that are able to create those relationships, to create those connection points, and to give that consumer the reason to be able to transact with that dealership. You know, as I said, it mm -hmm. does come all the way back down to people. Yeah. So speaking of kind of post-pandemic and looking forward, I guess, um, you know, you, you come off of a great show. You've got lots of leads to follow up on, I'm sure. <laughs> Your client base probably saw some other things that they liked around the show too, and are maybe kind of pushing you to expand your your product offering. Is is there anything you'd like to share uh, with the audience today, kind of about where Active Engage is headed? There's there's so much that's kind of tangential to the process that you facilitate for the dealer, something like a digital retailing or other solutions. I'm sure you're you're getting inquiries. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we get, so when we made the decision, we really brought ourselves back to our core in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, leading up to the pandemic and everything, we were trying to create all of these different products and services and whether it was white labeling or having it where my, my sales team would kind of go into a dealership and almost just like throw up on them. Like, look at all these <laughs> different things that we can do. Mm -hmm. And we realized, you know, during the pandemic that messaging is our core, like this is what we're super good at. And we recognized that the dealers at that time really needed us, you know, more than anything because their staff was at home, furloughed, any of those other things. So what we've done, in fact, is sat there and looked at ways to partner with other companies to be able to integrate with them whether it's with their DR tools or with their service scheduling tools, so that we somewhat stay agnostic around it. But we do also see places for us to go and make our own improvements. We, you know, we were just talking about AI and we are believers in AI. It's just how we use the AI versus being consumer facing, we are using it so that it's agent facing, meaning that our customer engagement experts 
are having the ability to have answers given to them more quickly, to be able to have suggestions of how to answer things, to help with training and facilitating and things like that. But where that communication still goes is from the agent, human, North America agent, to the consumer. So it's still this person to person. We mm -hmm. also, as if you know, you may have seen it, NADA, we launched uh, a new uh, product feature. It's really a product uh, around um, telephone conversion into text messaging. And the basic, okay. I, we call it flip to text. Uh, but mm -hmm. the idea of giving that customer the ability when they call the dealership to not have to wait the average 70 seconds on hold or not be the 23% that aren't answered and allow them to simply hit a number and have that converted into a text conversation. And so now they can communicate in the method and the time frame in which they want to communicate. Yeah, so it's great. all just about how to improve messaging. Yeah. So it's interesting that you said stick to your core and, and what you do best. Uh, we, we have the same philosophy at Dominion DMS as a DMS provider. You know, we're, we're not really interested in anything outside of what dealers expect from a DMS in the core functionality around OEM integrations, third-party integrations, accounting mm -hmm. parts, service, sales, F&I. But there are other DMS providers out there that are trying to be everything to everybody. And I just don't believe you can do it and can do it well um, across the breadth of solutions that dealers need. So that kind of brings us back to our strategy in partnering with wonderful solutions like yours from Active Engage in order to be able to offer dealers choice. Um, right. Maybe for the dealers who haven't um, heard about the integration between Active Engage and Dominion DMS, maybe talk a little bit about what they could expect that integration to look like. Yeah, I mean, so if, if if as a dealer you're not aware of it, you know, Dominion DMS has taken a very unique and different approach to providing a DMS that is the core. So it's going to have those core pieces that you need, but then also recognizes that dealers utilize a lot of other providers, whether it's utilizing an active engage, <laughs> right? Or, you know, for their messaging platforms, or if it's using you know, Darwin for their desking uh, capabilities or, you know, another one for their, you know, like a Cox or a, so forth for their uh, digital retailing tool. And mm -hmm. the, the flexibility that, you know, Dominion DMS is going to be giving the dealers is for them to be able to have the knowledge that not only do they have this great core robust, you know, DMS system, but if they are using Active Engage as their messaging provider, that Active Engage integrates into the Dominion, you know, DMS ecosphere and allows there to be some of this additional transactional aspects going back and forth. You know, the initial ones that we're working on with you all is service scheduling, and then we'll get into like RDR reporting, so we can truly mm -hmm. be able to give the dealer more robust reporting into understanding the ROI and so forth and what it is that they're doing with us, as well as what it is that they're selling. That's and we're right. excited. Well, good. And, you know, if ever we can give you more data in a secure, of course, uh, fashion, that, that's what we're looking forward to is to make this integration as efficient for our common client on the other side of the keyboard so that they're not Absolutely. having to read. And as you said, always keeping it data. secure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. It, yes, um, that is a big thing these days. So we talked a little bit about how NADA felt a little bit different in a good way, right? Um, <laughs> our industry here is ever evolving, though. And in 2024, there seems, seems to be starting off a little bit differently for dealers. January, there were some kind of uh, not great numbers posted. I think February recovered a little bit, but mm -hmm. there's certainly more margin pressure. Some key OEMs are walking back their aggressive EV push from 2023 and inventory volumes are definitely back to where they want, <laughs> even if the mix isn't quite right yet. Um, yes. <laughs> so as, as you and your team sit around and, and hear, I'm sure, from mm -hmm. dealers that you're working with about 
these changes and these new pressures um, coming at them. What do, what do you talk about as ways that you can help them through these changing changing winds and tides? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a really good point, and and it absolutely has you know reverted. I think is, is somewhat of a better way to say it. I think you know we all have very short term memory and and forget exactly what it is that we were you know going through as an industry through 2020 and into 21. Uh, and what we're seeing again is the is the need for high quality leads, customers that are transactional, that want to, you know, go down the path and the process of buying a car and not simply the quantity of leads, but more back into the quality is what they're looking for so that they can work them better, create that better relationship with the customer. Because like you said, I mean, it is the aspect of back to, well, hey, I understand that you really want the one with the black interior, but I have one with a gray interior. You can go home with it today or yeah. we can order it and and wait. And so that also goes back to the part we were talking about earlier of those salespeople that were quote unquote order takers need now to be salespeople again and to okay. be able to sell those advantages of you know getting your car today versus waiting for the order uh and, and as well maybe I mean, a little maybe a little bit more work for less commission as well <laughs> well that's okay. definitely the case so yes and and then it also just goes into the service aspects as well you know service departments are super busy and super full and it's taken people a month or two to get an appointment if they need like a diagnostic so even the way in which that part of the business is being handled creating again that relationship transactional aspect because you don't want to give that consumer a reason to go down the street to somebody else that's right that's right so it is um changing times as we mentioned but it's also really confusing for dealers out there um like you i'm i'm sure i had a chance to have many, many conversations with dealers at NADA, but a couple of nights, I actually got a chance to sit down, take a few <laughs> minutes um, and, you know, have more in-depth conversations with um, a handful of dealers. And they all said it, they're, they're just confused. There's so many solutions, a lot of vendors making um, a lot of new offerings in the market, and they're really confused about how it all fits together. And, you know, unfortunately, when people get confused, they tend to mm -hmm. take the path of least resistance, which is to not do anything, because <laughs> um, they're not sure they're making the right decisions. So dealers thinking about um, you know, purchasing solutions and services from Active Engage. Um, can they come to you? Can they get a clear understanding of of where you fit in in the solution suite yeah. and who your partners are that can also augment those solutions? Yeah, we do. I believe. I'm sure that somebody will tell me differently. Um, <laughs> but I did even I did even do a test the other day with uh, a friend that happens to own. Uh, a sprinter dealership and his marketing director or CMO uh, quote unquote mystery shopped one of my guys. I knew it was happening. Uh, and cause I asked him, I'm like, give me all the feedback. And he came back and mm -hmm. said, honestly, I got nothing to give you. He okay. did a great job. So I think that, and they are now a customer. I think that we do a really, really good job of explaining what it is that separates us. What makes us different, who are, our partners and why we've taken the path to wanting to partner with other best in class companies versus trying to, you know, be the jack of all trades. So yeah, and we really like to explain why we've taken this approach of being agnostic, but also really making sure that everybody understands back to the thing we've already spoken about a couple of times, we believe in the power of people. And especially in this industry, I think it's one of the things, you know, understanding is, it is a complex industry. It's a complex consumer. It's a complex purchase. And 
we need to be able to remember that and to to be able to help that consumer through those complex issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's one of the most expensive purchases that a consumer will make yes. in their lifetime as well. Um, so I saw on um, on your website that dealers can contact you directly. And that website mm -hmm. um, is www.activeengage.com. There's two E's in the middle there. One E. Um, one, e. Can, one E. All right. One E. I have but that if wrong. they type two, they'll still get there. We own them all. <laughs> They can also find that website by going to the dominiondms.com page, navigating to the partners uh, section, and then typing in something obvious like active or engage. Um, once they do that, and once they send um, a, a lead or an email uh, in through your site, what, what's the next step? Should they expect somebody to contact them? Is there a demo? How, how does the sales cycle work? They will typically receive a, a you know contact back from us. If they provide a phone number, they'll be getting a phone call. Uh, it will be within typically five to 10 minutes. Uh, if they don't provide, obviously, then it'll be an email that goes back to them. Yes, they should expect getting a demo. Uh, and also, you know, us explaining what separates us. Demos aren't long. You know, we're not this, you know, crazy thing. It's only going to take about half an hour, 40 minutes, with, and that includes questions. Uh, for assurances as well, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if if the manufacturer does happen to have any sort of a certified partner program of the sorts, uh, we are part of each and every single one of them. Uh, okay. So right. we've gone through all that due diligence as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. So um, as we close out uh, here today, I, I kind of always ask the same question of my guests on the podcast, but since you and I just talked at an ADA and I asked you that question there, I'm going to ask you a different type of question. We've been talking a little bit about AI and kicking it around um, in, in the industry and how real it is and how dealers should be thinking about it. So my question to you today is, what do you think the top benefit of AI is in the automotive industry, as well as the top risk? The, the top benefit is, is uh, process, uh, streamlining processes, uh, looking at ways to simplify, looking at ways for efficiencies, you know, whether it's through uh, follow-up processes, whether it's on, you know, service scheduling aspects of things or, uh, ordering things like, you know, parts and looking at ways in which to have uh, best in time inventory aspects and, and or scheduling people and stuff like that. There are a bunch of risks. I mean, with any new technology and, and how it's used, you know, there we're, we're at the at the very, very beginning of, you know, AI. And, you know, where we are, I mean, it, it there are leaps of which it's going to end up going. It still has issues and problems like we talked about earlier, you know, the fact that a consumer was able to convince, you know, the AI to sell it for a Tahoe for a dollar, or there's the aspects that there's this delusional uh, piece to AI where AI happens to um, it, it dreams in essence, and sometimes creates answers that are, you know, not correct. And, and, you know, it's a delusion. The problem with that is, is that unless it's caught, it then uses the answer that it just created as fact, so that in the future, when it's asked another question and it can relate back to that answer that it already gave that's wrong, it mm. uses it again and cites it. Yeah. You know, so those are the types of places that we need to be careful, uh, really, you know, checking, also making sure that the information that does give back to us is valid uh, before we just go and blindly implement something. Yeah. I do believe it is the future in, you know, in, in the world, right. In uh, not yeah. just our industry, obviously, but I think baby steps um, are definitely warranted with this one. So, yes. well, thanks Eric for joining me today. Thanks so much for your insights uh, into the industry and the great solutions that active engage brings to its dealer clients. And again, I'm so great. I'm so glad that you had a great NADA this year. Best of luck to you and your team. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.